The winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. Take it in your hand. Last September, The Guardian exposed serious labour rights abuses here in Qatar, including the deaths of hundreds of migrant workers. The government have said they're going to do something about it. So now, with the stadium for the 2022 World Cup starting to rise out of the ground, we've returned to Doha to find out if anything has changed. The place to start is with the World Cup preparations. Here at the Aspire Academy, a state-of-the-art sports centre, Qatar's young football stars are being coached to compete against the world's best in 2022 on a full-sized air-conditioned pitch. When the blazer showed Qatar name, everyone is only wanting to celebrate Qatar won. Everything I do, I eat, I sleep, everything is for football because it's, it's like my life. Well, the other controversy that there's been has been about the building of the World Cup and the use of migrant labour. Do you have any thoughts on that? or You don't want to no, talk no, no, about no, 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 But no, he no. might want to talk We're about We're talking about the academy. OK. OK. They are right to be sensitive. This is the Al Bida Tower, the HQ of Qatar's football authorities. On the 38th and 39th floors are offices occupied by the 2022 World Cup Organising Committee. But some of the men who built these offices have become victims of serious labour exploitation. They went unpaid for over a year. They were abandoned by their employer and left to live in squalor. Qatar's labour system stopped them quitting their jobs or leaving the country without their employer's permission. The Qatari authorities were told about their plight months ago, but we tracked some of them down who are still trapped in Doha. While the World Cup Organising Committee enjoys the lavish offices they built, these workers are still waiting to be paid. Project paperwork shows the officers were commissioned by a Qatar government organisation under the auspices of the current Emir. He is also the president of the World Cup Organising Committee. The budget was £2.5 million, but the contractor, Lee Trading and Contracting, stopped paying wages in 2012. There's a huge contrast between that place and the Al Bida Tower where the problems began for those men. Huge luxury at the Al Bida Tower and real difficulty where they're living now and they just don't understand why the Qatari government can't help them get out of that situation and the Qatari courts can't either. And uh, it's a good question because I can't quite understand either. The World Cup tower workers are not an isolated case. Low pay and even no pay is commonplace in Qatar's construction industry. 
just a few miles from Doha's luxury hotels, we found over 60 workers employed by Ibex Technical Trading and Contracting, marooned in a desert camp. Some of them said they have not been paid for five months. A problem to yeah, the rate of sir, I have a topic of panic. We say, I don't have a noni, a doubt they use gunny panic, I have a noni lopore, noon wagi panic, I can't even even have a titty ram to panic, the racket of China. I'll get the Biswasman no garnet home by Saki or Chachar may not pass over to any summon the salary out of the question of Dela, Boni, Unirgo, Bane, I racket. The guys here, there's 65 of them from India, Sri Lanka, Nepal. They're getting into big debt and they're living in really, really appalling conditions. No showers, salty water, and it's making them sick. And it's really shocking to see, it really is. Ujwal Bishwakarma's wife, Kamla, and their son, Ashish, live in a rented room on the outskirts of Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. Many of the migrant workers' problems begin in their own countries, with recruitment agents who charge huge fees in exchange for false promises about jobs and salaries in Qatar. The recruitment agent, which sent many of the men to Ibex Trading, is Capital International Manpower. We sent two men to visit the agency with a hidden camera, posing as prospective migrants. Although the Ibex workers had not been paid for months, staff assured them that they would face no problems with their salaries in Qatar. <laughs> Many migrants fall victim to the so-called double contract. This happened to Shambhu Shrestha, another Ibex employee sent to Qatar by Capital International Manpower. Contract Others suffer a far worse fate. According to Qatar's own figures, 882 migrants from India and Nepal died in 2012 and 2013. But most of these deaths were classified as sudden death, cause unknown, sometimes known as sudden death syndrome. One recent victim was Rishi Kandel, who died in May 2014. Wow, Duty or I Pachi, Kanakara, Sutnuo. Sute Pachi, Biana Amro, time Munchapone Pansma duty Jane. 
त्यति बेला रामले ऋषि दाइलाई बुझायो दाइ दाइ ड्युटी जाने बेला भयो तर दाइ बुझेन झसाङे भयो डरायो कसरी भयो सरी द रूम वेयर कैंडल यूज्ड टू स्लीप इज नाउ यूज्ड एज अ स्टोर नो वन डेज स्लीप देयर एनीमोर मान्छे मरेपछि डराउँछ अब फेरि अर्को मर्छ कि भनेर डराएको अरु के मनमा चिसो पसेको Nineteen days after Rishi Kandel died in Qatar, his body was flown home to Kathmandu, where it was received by his wife, Saraswati. People from the poorest countries of the world are still being bitterly exploited here in Qatar's building boom. But now, as the construction of the stadia starts for the 2022 World Cup, the question is whether the people's game, football, that so many people love, can make a difference. Here at the Al Wakra Stadium, Qatar's first World Cup venue, construction is underway. The World Cup offers Qatar a unique opportunity to reform its labour system. There are signs the authorities are starting to recognize the scale of the problems their workers face. But will they grasp this chance? Will they turn words into action? Or will Qatar continue to allow its migrant workers to be treated as just another disposable commodity? But while arguments rage over the risks footballers will face playing in Qatar's extreme heat, migrant workers from Nepal are dying on the job in record numbers. Mm -hmm. 